Russell. I just snuck over here from <laughs> snuck over here from public public television. You know the fuzzy picture with the auction, right? We'll be back with the concert after we grovel on the floor for money a while longer. Anyway, we are now in our bicentennial year of the Constitution, my friends. And that Constitution and genius document, which wound up protecting Nazis and the Ku Klux Klan and Larry Flint and Oliver North and the entire computer dating division of the PTL Club. <laughs> and so is it not an injustice in that all of we comedians are bestowing awards on each other and yet ignore the politicians who supply so much merriment in America today? Where is the comedy award for President Ronald Reagan, who, when the Iranian crisis started to uh, happen last November, he thoughtfully provided us with two conflicting answers for the price of one? Like the time he said, we were not trading arms for hostages, and we're not going to do it anymore. <laughs> two days later, he said, we will not yield to terrorist blackmail, 2,000 anti-tank missiles, a Bible and a cake maybe, but that's it. <laughs> I still can't get over the fact we gave a Bible to the Iranians, right? Just the perfect gift for your average fanatic Muslim fundamentalist. <laughs> Where's the comedy award for Donald Reagan and George Shultz? When the story broke last November, Reagan didn't know anything about it. Reagan found out about it from Brian Gumbel. <laughs> George Shultz still doesn't know about it. George Shultz doesn't think the Shah can hang on much longer. And so the question is not what did the president know and why didn't he know it. The real question is, do jelly beans cause amnesia? <laughs> Where is the comedy award for the entire Democratic Party? Where being the front runner in a presidential race is considered to be a great way to meet girls. <laughs> And a couple of weeks ago, when Gary Hart's difficulties were revealed, at the time, I said that if these sexual allegations are true, Mr. Hart should get out of the presidential race and into TV evangelism where he belongs. <laughs> and so all of a sudden, then, the issue became adultery and its relevance to a president's ability to govern. Well, let's look at the record. <laughs> as far as we know, we've only had two presidents who never committed adultery. Nixon and Millard Fillmore. <laughs> Thomas Jefferson. Historians tell us that Thomas Jefferson was so loved by his slaves that they had a special name for him. Dad. <laughs> so that's what we celebrate. In this bicentennial year of the Constitution, we celebrate the average American's ability to look at our elected officials and say, that's entertainment. And I'll tell you what else is American. Me standing up here, doing a very American thing, playing Battle Hymn of the Republic on a Yamaha piano. Thank you very much.